Hi, this is your millennial pastor, and here's what's going on at the broad. Have you made the turn yet? You still have time to submit your turn testimony by September 30th, 2020. Please submit your video to info at fbcbroad.org. Calling all music ministry participants. The virtual choir returns Sunday, October the 4th. Please check your emails for further instructions. All right, so part two. Uh, how many of you enjoyed last week? I enjoyed it. How many people took the test? How many people went online and took the test? All right. Uh, how many of y'all got numbers back on what your numbers are? Okay, you know what your numbers are. I'm the only person that got a letter back. I failed. All right, I just got to eat. I got to help. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but it's wonderful to see how it changes over the years. I don't want to take up any time. Our teacher could be using. Without any further ado, our teacher for the night. Give her a hand as she comes. Keisha Norman, affirm her. Amen. Well, good evening, all. Um, thank you for coming back. <laughs> it's having, I'm so glad to see you all. Let's just go ahead and open right up with prayer. Let's get this started right. Um, Lord, right now we come to you just saying thank you again, God, for a new mercy and a new chance to love God. Thank you for these people that are surrounded by me right now, Lord, the people I'm surrounded by and their obedience to where you want them to be right now, God. Um, thank you for being unconditional in your love, even when we struggle to give it to others, God. And as we figure this thing out, Lord, as we try to get it right, and as we fail and try to get it right again, Lord, thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, good evening, all. We're going to continue this conversation about the love languages. Shout out to the ones who actually took their test. Let me see those show hands again. I missed you all. Good. You guys pass or fail? <laughs> so we know that um, the love languages, there are about five of them, as we learned last week. And we just want to refresh for those of you who are new to this um, conversation, and for those of us who may have forgotten, there are five love languages. So let's just go ahead and quickly refresh over those. That first one, quality time. Is there anybody who wants to share out what quality time means to them or what they got from that? Just yell out. Okay, undiluted. I like that you said that, undiluted. Undivided, that's the word that comes to mind for me. Focused, attentive, okay. What about words of affirmation? Words of affirmation. Words that build. Words that build. Very good. There are words that build. All right, let's keep going. Acts of service. You guys don't have to be quiet. I teach kindergarten. We get loud. Acts of service. Doing something. Something nice for them. Lessening the burden. We want to focus on lessening the burden for someone. All right? Receiving gifts. I knew y'all wasn't going to be quiet about that one. Receiving gifts. All right, we know it's thoughtful. We want to be considerate. We want to know what that person needs. And that last one, physical touch. We want to focus on proximity, you know, just being there, being a little bit closer. A few other things that we touched on, each person has an emotional love tank. So as you can see, the car in the gas station, that's filling up. Your job is to fill and refill other people, and vice versa. People are supposed to pour into you with your love language. You're supposed to pour into them. Your love tank does deplete, so it's important to take that time and be filled back into. All right, we had a primary love language. That's the one that you probably scored the highest in, followed by your secondary love language, and that just basically means that's the one that you're going to result to secondary. Um, some people might have been bilingual. We didn't mention that. That means that you scored even in two, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, and we'll talk about how we can um, interact and translate with people as we learn their love languages. All right, so we had a few questions. Sorry if that's really small. Uh, one of the questions from last week, how do we get stronger in a language that isn't comfortable to us? We talked about how just learning any new skill, you have to practice. You have to be disciplined in it. Remember that this is not a, an appeal. It's not um, a suggestion. This is God's commandment to us to love. So we have to be disciplined in that, and we have to be practic practicing in that. And a verse that came to mind was um, John 13 and 34. It says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. Everyone will know you. They will know. You are God's folk. You are his people by the way that you love each other. Another question that came up is, what do we do when we're trying and it's unrequited? 
That person is not receiving the love the way we want them to. They're not responding to it the way that we expect them to. We got to keep in mind that only God can change the heart of somebody. You know, you do your part, that's all you can do. I wish I could play someone else's part some days, but I cannot. And the verse that came to mind was Ezekiel 36 and 26. Let's listen at that verbiage now. He says, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit in you. I will replace your stubborn heart with a heart that is willing to love. He never said, I'm going to replace someone else's. He never said, I'm going to replace old girl's heart. He's going to replace your heart. So being prayful of that so we can extend and reach people when it feels unrequited. All right, so last week we covered an overview of the languages, examples that we see in the Bible in Jesus' life. And then tonight we want to talk about the do's and don'ts of each love language, and then we're going to talk about how to love God in your love language. So how do you give that back? All right, so let's jump right in. Raise your hand if quality time was your number one. Quality time, that's me. All right, I see a lot of quality time over there. You see how they're all hanging out together, all the quality time people? They're getting that quality time in right now. I love it. All right, so quality time. Some things to do with quality time, enjoying hobbies and activities together. We got to keep in mind that sometimes this might be an activity that only one of you may enjoy. This might be something that you are not quite comfortable with. It might not be your interest. But the goal is not what you are doing, it's why you are doing it. So keep that in mind. It's not what you are doing, why you are doing it. Things like cooking, working out, maybe grocery shopping with someone. Those are all ways to just spend, you know, some quick quality time with someone. We talked about quality conversation. I want you guys to really focus on empathy and listening to understand and not to respond. So a big part of quality time is that conversation. We discussed how it's important to be present and not just hear. All right, and another thing I want you to think of is just like you say, hearing versus listening. Do you hear me or are you listening? And that's a part of quality time too because chances are there's going to be some conversation that is taking place when you are spending quality time with someone. When you are listening to understand and not to respond, you are truly trying to put yourself in that person's feelings. You are trying to see what they are feeling in that moment. You are trying to see things from their perspective. You're trying to genuinely understand them. You're not trying to get a word in just because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do. You're really trying to understand them, to see where they're coming from, to see if you can see things from their lens before you respond. So when you add that to quality time, it's successful. We wanted to talk about um, other ways to do vacations, getaways, day trips. Sometimes just being present with someone is what fills their love tank back up doesn't necessarily have to be something big. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, some grand trip. It could be just ride with me somewhere. So we have to get creative with our love languages. Um, I love what Pastor said last Sunday about when you have that vision of something, you just got to make it work. You have to get creative. You have to get innovative. So keep those things in mind too. All right, we want to talk about some things we want to avoid. Just like you want to interact with someone, there are some ways that you don't want to interact with a person who loves by way of quality time. You want to avoid distractions, technology, multitasking. I understand that my generation is apparently the best at that, but when it comes to quality time, we have to avoid that. You need to be present with someone. Postpone dates, constantly putting me off, constantly saying you don't have time. And there is a way to do it. There is a way to do this without hurting your loved one. You may say something like, I would love to spend quality time with you right now, but I'm behind on a project. If you could give me 30 minutes, I'll be here, I'll be here attentive. I'll be here undivided. So you have to communicate that. A big part of these love languages is making sure that you are communicating your needs to that person as well as listening to theirs, reciprocating that. Putting yourself in that position and being able to genuinely be present with them shows them, I care about you, I love you, even if that means I'm doing something I am not genuinely interested in, this may not be a hobby of mine, but my care for you is greater for my disagreement with what we want to do. We're going to move on to words of affirmation. Those are words that build. So that means that you are constantly building and pouring into that person with your words, compliments, saying I love you. 
I think we often forget how little we actually say those words. We may show it in ways, but how many times, how many people did you tell that you love today? How many people did you tell that you love today? Maybe three? See, that's good that you can, you can count that, but we forget about that sometimes. We forget to actually say it out loud. Someone who loves with words of affirmation, they need to hear it. I need you to say it to me. I need to know. Um, for my young people in the back, there's a Drake lyric, and he says, I need acknowledgement. If I have it, then tell me I got it. Let me know. Acknowledge me. Shout me out. Take it a step further. Tell them why. I love you because you do this well. I love you because you keep your poise in frustrated, frustrated situations. I love you because I probably would have reacted differently. Whatever it is, remind them. And then take it a step further. Solidify your love for them by giving them a reason why. Sometimes we can say it blankly and we can say it empty and we can, we can just say it to say it. But providing that reason lets me know, oh, you thought about this. You genuinely mean this. You really do love me. Reminding them of things that they excel at. If you know someone is good at something, that could be a push for them to do it more. That could be a push for them to take it into maybe a business venture. I love those Christmas trees you make, Ms. Janice. She might make me one just because I said I loved it. You have to think of notes of appreciation. That could be a baby step for someone who struggles with saying it verbally. I remember a conversation last week saying, what if it feels like I'm faking it? What if it feels uncomfortable? Take those baby steps. I don't want to tell you I love you, but I might write it. And that could be a words of affirmation. You get stronger in that, and before you know it, you'll be able to verbalize that. You'll be able to put words to it. So you have to start somewhere. You really do. Acknowledge them publicly. For a person who speaks words of affirmation, shout them out. One thing I love about my dad is that when he's being recognized for something, even if we had nothing to do for it, you better believe he's going to shout out for his wife and his children. He's going to do it. He affirms us in that way. I haven't broke ground on not a single building in Memphis, not one. But he, he constantly affirms us to let us know that he was, he was appreciative of us being there, of that support. Some things to avoid with a person whose words of affirmation, insults, naturally so, self-explanatory, especially in a public view. Those are the things that kind of they, they break them down, that depletes their love language, that depletes their love tank. Criticism that breaks down. Now, mind you, there is a way to provide criticism to your loved one without breaking them down. There is a way to do that. I think a, an important step, the first thing you need to do, you have to ask first. I might not be open to criticism at this moment. I might not be open to a suggestion. So ask me, may I suggest? Would you like my advice? Would you like my input? And respect the answer. Respect it. No, I don't want your advice right now. Okay. That's it. And who knows, they may come back and say, hey, I'm ready now. Would you, would you still like to share that advice with me? And if they do say yes, I statements. So it's not so much an attack on that person. Because with someone who's words of affirmation, your words make or break them. Your tongue can be a sword or it can be sweet for them. You have to be careful to make sure that you are not attacking that person or their ideas, whatever their action is. So you may say things like, I was confused when, could you explain? I would have done this differently. I really like this. You may want to think about that. But again, it goes back to asking first, making sure that you have created that space where they, they even want it. They even want your suggestion. Sometimes we think that we are building someone up, and we're not. We could be tearing them down, especially if you're giving someone unsolicited, unsolicited advice or input, and you're attacking, with, you're attacking the person. So be careful with words of affirmation, and it's more of the wording and the tone for that type of person. It's how you are delivering it, the space you are delivering it in. A person who is words of affirmation, they're never going to want your advice in front of everybody. They're never going to want your suggestions or input in front of everyone. You gotta learn to, I'm gonna rock with you on the united front, and when we in the back, then we can talk about it.
All right, so acts of service. That was our third love language that we dived into. And the word that we were focusing on was lessening the burden. So we want to make sure that we are helping that person. The load gets really heavy. Day-to-day -day life can be very heavy. Someone who loves an acts of service, they need you to make it lighter for them. That's how you fill their love tank. You help them out by doing those things that typically can, um, can stack up on them. And before you know it, you've started to take things off of their plate, and they're, they're replenished. Their love, their love tank is being filled back up. Small errands, dry cleaning, oil changes, car wash, doing things without being asked. You notice those kind of things. Sacrificing what you want to do. So sometimes that means that I might be trading my pedicure money in for maybe picking up the bill one day. Golf clubs might be exchanged for mating the socks on a Saturday morning. Simple things, not necessarily costly. It costs you your time, it does. Now that it does. Acts of service does cost you your time. You might want to help them with a project or task. Maybe you're a great typist, and the person you are helping, they might struggle with something like that. I'm just trying to give you guys small ideas so you can think of it, and then you can take it to a greater scale. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be something as big as helping you pack up your house and move. It could be something as simple as you had an event and you need thank you cards, so I'm sealing them for you. Little things that take something off of someone shows them your love and the acts of service. You want to try to avoid broken commitments with a person who is acts of service. If you commit to something, if you say you are going to do it, you need to do just that. Your word is your bond to that person. I'd rather you say you weren't going to do it at all than for me to be expecting you to do it and you did not. Don't create more work for them. Do not create more work for them. What I mean by that is do it with 100% or leave it alone. If I have to go back behind you and I got to go back and fix it, I could have just done it. I could have just done it. So if you were not going to do it right from the start, do not do it. Hands off. Take your hands off of it. Because then you create more work for that person. They have to go back and fix it. They got, they got to go back and do it the way that they want it done. Especially if you know how they want it done and you being lazy about it, leave it alone. Do not be lazy in it. Complaining or holding it over their head. Someone who has acts of service, who loves that way, they are not going to respond well to you complaining about it. We do it cheerfully. We don't do it for the recognition. We're not doing it for a reward. We're not doing it for anything in return. Did you do it for love or do you do it to keep score? We are not keeping score. Acts of service is not, I did this, I did this, I did this. I'm three now, so I don't got to do nothing else for the week. That's not how you love a person that acts of service. And that's not how you would want someone to show love to you. Imagine if God kept score on us. I'm losing that game. I've lost it. I can't come back from it. Receiving gifts. So we understood that this was really big on thought. I want you guys to say this with me. I want you to say thought over cost. Because sometimes we forget that receiving gifts is not always about who spent the most money, who got the most expensive gift, who got the flashiest thing, the shiniest thing, the newest thing. That's not what it's about. It's the little things that count, those thoughtful things. Thoughtful trinkets or souvenirs. You going on a business trip? Bring me a keychain back. That's something so small that can make someone's day who is a receiving gifts person. Something as minor as a keychain. You could have got it from a gas station. They're not going to know. Unless you leave the tag on it, don't do that. <laughs> Favorite treats or candy. We mentioned that last week. Just a simple thinking of you. Something simple as that. Now, disclaimer, please do not show up to anybody's birthday, anniversary, with a piece of Twix or a Snickers. Don't tell them I sent you doing that. <laughs> You know better than to do that. I believe you guys have great judgment, so I don't think that would be an issue at all. But just day to day, thinking of someone. 
gifts or planned trips that reflect that you have been listening to their needs or desires. Your loved one talks about Paris all the time. I can't afford Paris right now. Keychains are $5 on Amazon. Paris, Tennessee is two hours away. Something as small as that. You have to get creative. You know, and that just shows me, wow, you are making an effort. You are trying. You hear me. You are listening to me. Because remember, receiving gifts is all about the thought. Maybe a French-themed dinner. Something as simple as that. French fries. Something. French toast. Anything. You dress it up. Make it. Put your little hat on. Ask for help. Ask for help. If you are not sure, ask a close one. If you don't know what to get that person, maybe you have been, you know, I'm not going to even lie to you. I haven't been present. I haven't been listening to them. I'd rather you ask for help. They would rather you ask for help than to show up with something that means nothing to them. Reach out to their loved ones. Put yourself aside. It's okay. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with asking for help especially when you're trying to show love to a person. And I think more than anything, that shows that extra step of consideration. Wow, you can't stand talking to my mama, but you wouldn't ask. <laughs> my brother scared you, but you wouldn't ask them? Something like that. You want to avoid those thoughtless gifts. Because what you're telling that person is that I really haven't been listening to anything that you have been saying. I really don't know where you are and where you stand right now. I don't know what you need. I really don't know. Missing or forgetting those special days. That person who receives gifts, you better believe they have a calendar. <laughs> they know. I lost my first two on January 12th, and you missed it. They, they want to know that you're thinking of those days. They want to know that you're thinking of them. They want to know that you, you think that they, they deserve to have something, whether it's big or small, but something thoughtful on their birthday, something thoughtful on an anniversary, something thoughtful on a special holiday, whatever holidays may be special to you all. But all, it comes back again to knowing the person that you are trying to love and trying to show love to. And then the last um, love language we want to talk about the do's and don'ts was physical touch. So some things to do is reassuring touch. That could be hugs, pats on the back. Remember, physical touch relationships are all dependent on the relationship to the person. You have to understand how appropriate it is to the relationship. Um, intimate touch, consensual. Make sure you are welcomed in that space with that person. Make sure you know. Make sure it's appropriate to the relationship. I am not a physical touch person, but some of my children in my classroom, they love high fives and they love hugs. So we have to work on that boundary. Proximity. That could be something sitting nearby. Passes and touching, I know you're here. I'm with you. I'm present with you. Something as simple as that. Just reminding them. Just a quick touch of love. Just a quick, quick tap. Things to avoid. Neglect. Being cold with them. The cold shoulder. Abuse or appropriate, inappropriate touch of any kind can break a person who loves in physical touch all the way down. And this goes for any love language. You don't want to use their love language against them. Don't deprive them of it because you know that's what gets them going. Don't take that away from them because you know they thrive on that. And don't use it against them especially. I know in, none of us would ever harm, harm anyone in that way, but we just have to talk about it. We have to mention that. So now that we've kind of talked about the do's and don'ts of each love language, we've just done a quick overview of things to do and things to avoid. I want to stop and ask you all, um, has it shown, shed light to anything? I remember a conversation over here. Um, what's your, I'm sorry, your name? Miss Lisa, she told me that she did not know her love language until last week, and now she's like, this makes more sense. Some things are making more sense. Do anybody have any light bulb moments that they want to share out about their love language?
after I took the, um, well, actually after the lesson on last week and then after I took the test, um, I always thought that my love language was, you know, had, had to do with quality time. Mm. But now that I took the test and I know for sure, and now it does make sense because I prefer spending time than getting gifts. Mm. You know, and I, uh, sometimes if I get a gift, I, don't, I maybe don't react the way the person wants me to react. I'm more excited about the time they spent to do it. You know what I mean? And I never understood that, that about me. It's like I'm not, I don't really care about gifts. I just like the time. I was shocked that my second one was gifts. My first one is um, quality time, but I thought it would have been acts of service. Mm. But that's what I do. So I was thinking, like, you know, that's what I do, so that's, that's my love language, but it was gifts. But then I had to think about how much it means to me just get the little, the little things. simple things. Yeah, and how upset I am when, like, you didn't think about me. You, I didn't even get a flower. I mean, yeah. So. Lay up on this side. Yeah. <laughs> Simple thing. <laughs> I'd love to hear from any men who took the test. We all failed. Y'all failed it? <laughs> Y'all don't know how to love. Noted. Yeah, zero. <laughs> okay, so I'm hearing some people. So I, I took it. I'll tell you uh, two things that happened to me. I learned that I have a love language of personal and a love language in my, uh, extra, I have an introverted and extroverted. That's another level to this that we'll talk about in a, another a part two to this. Uh, Kage doesn't know she's doing it yet. But the introversion and the extroversion of love. So in my introverted personal, the way I love and receive love is different from my extroverted professional. I have to love people like you had to learn to love your children in the classroom, but touch is not necessarily one of your languages. Well, I shepherd a lot of people, and I'm in a lot of professional capacities where I have to open up myself to receiving people in the space with me. And I'm an introvert to that degree, because when I leave y'all, I go shut myself off in a room <laughs> all by myself. And I don't really want about four or five people in there, you know, close to me and around me. And so I go from that intro, extra, and I had to figure that out about myself. You know, it's almost like a, uh, uh, how do you do that? But I have, to, I have to recognize that when I'm in this building, I'm pastor. So when the little 40 kids come in after school and they all want me to high five them in the hallway, it does not matter what kind of day I've had. I need to stand there and call them by name and high five every last one of them because their pastor affirms them. Now, I need to get to the office and figure out how to pay for something that Craig just bought, and I'm mad as hell. <laughs> All right, so, but, but I can't let that come out with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, so that intro, you, you also got to learn your introversion and extroversion to your love languages as well because there are some times that you can't cut off what you want to cut off in your professional work life. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember that, okay? So that's another important part. So we'll, we'll get to, uh, there's, a, there's another section to listening, the listening part, uh, how to listen. Uh, we, we hear, but we don't listen. There's a, there's a whole book on that that comes out of this same study. And uh, matter of fact, I'll go get them before the class over and show them to you. The introversion and the extroversion. You're gonna really love it. So I learned quite a bit last week. First of all, I had never heard of this. And I took the test during class. <laughs> and I, what I thought I was, I was, right? So it, it started me thinking about my relationship with my children. Mm. And it makes me wonder what, you know, what their languages, you know, are and if I may have missed something, you know, with our relationships. I know that boys are much different than girls. So I need to make them to take the test really, really soon. 
That's our homework tonight. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was quite interesting. And I just wonder if Tamika knows mine. Love language. Which one is it? I don't know. Did y'all hear that? I don't know. Quality time or what's the other one? Affirmation or acts of service or She's not right. personal touch or receiving yeah. gifts. So the part you said one is quality time. The oh, other no, one that's not that's not right. Acts of service, I think, is the other one. So this is a moment where you all can go and take that test together so you guys can understand how to love each other. That was my second one. That was my secondary. But you should know quality time. Where do you take the digital gift slide? I'll show you. All right, so thank you all for sharing. So what I'm hearing is that we had a lot of light bulbs this week. Some people learned that the love language that they expected was not necessarily the love language that they got. Uh, we're learning that, and that is right. There are so many layers to love languages, and um, let me be careful how I say this. I wish you guys had more time to learn about it, <laughs> because he'll throw me in there real quick. <laughs> but yes, there are so many layers to it. So I do find that sometimes my love language and my platonic relationships might look different than my professional. My professional. So that's something, too, that you guys would love to, I would love for you all to get into. He's going to teach that one, though. In your seasons of life, yeah. the changes, I mean, I know Blaine well. Um, I'm, <laughs> I know Blaine well, it ain't funny. I'm 65 now. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I couldn't believe what was on the paper. Yeah, for a woman your age. Stop it. Okay, now. Go on, tell it then, man. Hey. Go on, tell it. She just told me. Tell me more. No. I, you know, we have to have a conversation. You know, conversation. But, no, um, seriously, I could not believe what was on the paper. As in your results or what we were learning? Yes. To clarify? Okay, your results. Yes. Okay. And um, I didn't know whether to be disappointed or to be excited. <laughs> but I, I hope we can delve more into that as it relates to seasons of life and your love language. All right. So let's let's deal with that a little bit now. Um, <laughs> The only reason I jump in with, with daughter is what she's doing is the topical part of this Bible study, and I do the theological. Okay, so I'm not going to throw her in the theological ring, but she's handling the topical. She got topical 10,000%, and she got that locked down. Those that are planted in the courts of our Lord shall be fat and flourishing even in their old age. Does the Bible not say that? So what happens, they, it says, and they shall be like the evergreen tree, which is what? Evergreen. Always evergreen. Right? Always, Always green, right? Leaves That's what change. the psalmist says. So here's what happens. God has a way of preserving us throughout the seasons of life, all right? Now, we need to have a healthy conversation about that. Uh, if you f it, now, where are you planted? Where are you planted? In the house of the Lord, in the court. Now, if you planted at Rayford's, you're going to be woe out by the time you fought. All right? If you plant it in the club, every Friday, I'm just saying what I'm saying. It's grown folk, right? Y'all fill in the blanks, right? If you plant it at Rayford's every Saturday night, by the time you're 45, you're going to be bent over, right? And, and, and you're going to be saying, I'm tired. I'm woe out, right? But when you, are, when you are planted in the house of the Lord, right, and you are saying, there's not a lot of miles on this car, amen, you can still be flourishing 
And we don't want to provide the context of that scripture, but it says those that are planted in the courts of our Lord shall be fat and flourishing even in their old age. They shall still bring forth. In other words, they're going to have life within them because life has not taken life out of them. And all too often what happens to us is that we come to Jesus just as we are, weary, wound, and sad, and woe out at 20, you know. But the Lord says, look, preserve yourself, pace yourself. And gifts are like love languages, uh, spiritual gifts. They shift and change over a lifetime, okay? Uh, your spiritual gifts when you are young are different than the manifestation of your spiritual gifts when you are aged and more seasoned. Uh, you are not going to be the patient usher at the door uh, when you are 20. You're you just not. It's just hard. I mean, sometimes people get that gift, but your, your gifts change, your spiritual gifts change, as well as your love languages change, right? Your expressions of love, right, uh, as you grow older, they change. A lot of things change about us in seasons, but the good thing of it is that there's still life inside of you. There's still joy inside of you. I was just telling... Uh, who was that? Paula and some other people. We were sitting at the table in the lobby today, and I told them, I said, the, the problem that my staff probably has with me is keeping up with me because I'm as excited 20 years after starting my work as I was 20 years ago uh, because I still have life and vision and vitality. And so I'm not the pastor who gets to the point and saying, let's, let's figure out how to cut across and make this look good and, you know, just get up and say, ain't he all right and be through. I'm still going to study the scripture. I'm going to look at the third view of the same text this past week and come forth with another message that digs deep. Sydney came in and said, how did you get all of that out of that? I still love what I do. And when you are preserved and you, and, and, and the scripture says that here are promises that God wrote in scripture. And one of the promises that God wrote in Scripture is that he can preserve you with long life, good life, right? Caleb said at 85 years of age, give me my mountain. He said, I am still as young as I am, strong as I was 40 years ago. And God said, I'm going to give you everything I promised you at 85. So, Ann, I don't know what your gift said, hallelujah. <laughs> but somebody ought to be shouting. <laughs> and somebody ought to be working out. Amen. <laughs> somebody ought to be praying and shouting. Amen. And I think that was an awesome segue into how do we return this back to God. So we talked about those gifts, as he just mentioned. So these gifts have been given to us, and we want to talk about how we can use our love language to give it back to God. Yeah. So using our love language to reciprocate that same love and praise that he gives to us, how do we give it back? All right, so again, I'm going to start with my friends who are quality time. Uh, we see this again in the Bible. The Lord is constantly affirming us and letting us know that he is with us. Deuteronomy 31, the Lord is with you. Hosea, I am the Holy One among you. God himself will be with them in Revelation. He's spending that quality time with his people. God wants nothing more to, than to spend time with his people. He desires to be near us. That's his love language of quality time. What does that look like for us? What does that look like when I'm ready to use my quality time love language? How do I give that back to God? That means you're giving up some of your time. That may mean that you are spending time. Well, not may. That means you are spending time praying regularly, getting in that Bible, Bible study, Sunday school, maybe group or independent. You're getting to know the word. You're spending that time getting to know him. You're using your love language of quality time, and you're giving that back to God. You're volunteering. Maybe you are giving your quality time by volunteering to do acts of service to serve God's people. So you might be hitting two love languages at once. We've learned that sometimes some of those interactions can sometimes fall into more than one love language. So quality time is actually one of my top two love languages. And I find that God shows his face the most to me in timing. I'm always amazed with his timing of things so divine that it is, how amazing that is to me, and how kind of God to constantly love me in that way. That's how he shows that I need that love language. He gives it back to me. The timing of things for me blows my mind, literally blows my mind. We talk about words of affirmation, those words that build. 
And we know that the Bible is already filled with words of affirmation. And we talked about some just some verses where we are reaffirmed. But let's talk about some examples when we see that people are reaffirming God and his greatness. We know that David expressed his love for God. Psalms, praise, songs. We know that there are many songs in the Bible that express that. We know that Paul affirmed his love for God in letters. Words of affirmation is my number two. Love letters to God. You can show that I'm a writer by nature. Writing is easier than speaking for me. And that's okay. Letters to God. He can read those too. Speaking it out loud, adoration and prayer. Reading songs in Psalms. To my musical people, maybe that means you are creating your own songs. You are singing those songs back to him. You are reaffirming God. You are singing those praises and adoration to him. You are creating, though, that language, that dialect, that dialogue with him, reaffirming God. For our acts of service, we know that God sent his son, the ultimate act of service, who then turned around and gave his life, another act of service, for our sins. The burden was removed from us. Jesus had nothing to do with it. He was going to be fine. And that's what acts of service is sometimes. Sometimes I'm going to be fine if those dishes don't get washed. But it will help you, right? And that's what we see there. So we see that that sacrifice alone was the supreme act of service. Now, in 2019, we're not seeing that as much, of course. But if there's some, there are some ways that you can give your own act of service in the church, in your relationship with Christ. You are providing counsel or maybe guidance to someone in need. And let me just give a disclaimer for that. If someone needs counseling or advice further than you, that act of service might be giving them the byway to professional help. Mission trips, work, locally too. There is work to be done right where you are planted. You don't always have to go across the sea. It doesn't have to be foreign. Your act of service can be done right here in Binghampton. Go pick up some trash. That is showing God that you care about the community that he has placed you in. He has planted you here. He's put us here. Community service. Volunteering in a ministry. I know a lot of us serve in ministries. We use our gifts and we give back. That's a way that you can show God that you appreciate him by using your acts of service to give back to your community, your church, those around you, those in need. Receiving gifts. God speaks this love language fluently as well. He gave us this earth, all of its many resources. The giving of his son, Christ, a sacrifice for us. Those are big gifts, yes. I know we say I would give you the world, but it might not be possible. But there are some things that we can do to show our love for God by using that love language of receiving gifts. Tithing, giving back to him what he has given to us. Remember that nothing on this world belongs to us. Just as quick as we got it, it can be removed. Giving materials or possessions to those in need. Giving time by serving. Those are all ways that we can use that gift, I'm sorry, that love language of receiving gifts to give it back, to give glory to God. I know that Tyrese has a musical gift. That was a gift given to him. And what does he do? He gives it back to God. Keila, she captures moments for people through photography. She uses that gift and she gives it back to God. Krista, naive, y'all know her? She has a calm presence about her. So she goes out when people are grieving. That's the gift that she uses to give back to God. Lastly, physical touch. Physical touch is what I believe that seriously that has to been Jesus' love language. We know that we, we heard a lot about him using touching and healing as his ministry. We understood that in Genesis, Jacob wrestled with God. He physically wrestled with God. God was showing him love in that way too. He was giving him that physical touch. That was his way of demonstrating that. In Exodus, Moses was touched and he was shining. The people didn't, didn't, who are you? Who is this man? Physical touch from God. Some of you who love in that love language, physical touch, may often say that you feel God's presence. You feel him. 
For those of us who struggle with that, that might be something, you might get it in words of affirmation. God may constantly be there by you read this devotion and then you saw that word again and you saw it again and you saw it again and you saw it again. He was using words of affirmation. For those of you who feel God's presence, maybe he's loving you in that physical touch. For those of you who are quality time like me, maybe the timing of things. Oh my goodness. How did you know I needed this right then, right there, right now? We can express our love for God with physical touch. Of course, using our hands to love people, not to hurt. That's simple. Understanding that joining hands in prayer, something as simple as that. Holding people up, something simple as that. Showing love to God's people is another way of loving God. And before we move on to the questions, because I do want you all to have time to have conversation, just as much as we want to others to respect and acknowledge our love languages, we want to be loved in that way, we also have to think of it as a way, I want you to shift gears and think of it as how people love and praise and worship and give their love to God. So what I mean by that is that someone who is praising God in a different way than you is going to look different. Their love language and how they're giving it to God may look different. I sit next to Alicia Norman every Sunday, and she affirms God. She affirms in the way that she speaks. I write everything down. And that's how I affirm God. Her praise is not better than mine. It's the same. And we have to keep that in mind, too, when people are using their love languages. They might praise or worship a little bit different than you. That's the way that they are loving God. That's the way they are using their language to love God. And he translates them all. He can. He understands them all. It's not our job or position to understand or judge someone else's praise or worship. We love differently, just like we praise differently, just like we worship differently. And I hope you all have enjoyed this conversation. I know that there is so much more for us to get into. I will attempt to answer all questions, and the ones I can't, I will pass on to the big guy. But seriously, I have enjoyed this conversation. Thank you all for being so open in this dialogue. So if we have any questions. Can we throw a subject on to, to tack on back? Can you go back to the last slide? Yeah. Um, and one of the areas that we don't like to talk about in love is tough love, right? But tough love is one of God's love languages too. The examples that you see in scripture, one is used here. Jacob wrestled with God, but what happened at the end of that wrestling match? He, he touched the hollow of his thigh in a blessing, but it caused him to limp mm -hmm. for the rest of his life. We don't like to think of tough love as an act of God, but it is. Tough love is the love that prevents us from self-destruction. And oftentimes, we don't see it in that manner. But I want you to think of something about your own self for a moment. If God had not loved you in some way that hurt you, how bad would you be to yourself right now? How arrogant would you be? How puffed up and conceited would you be? Paul said, watch this that was given me a thorn in my flesh that I might not be what? Exalted more highly than others. So he said, God allowed, he said, he allowed this to happen to me for a reason. Now, many people say we don't know if it was physical, we don't know if it was emotional, we don't know this, but Paul described it as a what? Thorn in the flesh. So there are some things that God allows to happen for our good that we don't necessarily like, right? If we continue in the same path that we're going down without that thing interrupting us on that path at that particular intersection, the next intersection may be destruction. So God interrupts us and allows pain. If you Google this, I promise you you'll find it. It's a great book. Pain, the gift that nobody wants. I read it in Israel uh, and got into a long discussion with Scott Morris and some friends of ours over there because uh, 
you know, if you don't have pain in your life, guess what happens? You do some crazy stuff. If there's a fire over here and that stove is hot and you start reaching to it and your senses don't, you know, you're about to put your hand over here. If you can't feel, guess what? You're about to burn your hand up. But the fact that your hand has some, some nerves in it and it'll allow you to feel as you're getting close to it, say, ooh, that's hot, something's hot over there. You withdraw and you don't destroy yourself. And so you don't want that love to be exempt. Notice something else one of the psalmists says. It was good that I was afflicted. He said, it taught me, right? And oftentimes, this love language is hard to receive because we don't learn from it. You can keep going through the affliction of the same thing over and over and over again. And then when people start telling you about it and trying to help you with it, you rebuke it, right? That's why I preach Sunday, don't rebuke the front door that's being shut. Thank God that the roof reveals something in you that you had that you didn't even know, right? So as she continues to answer your questions, I want you to consider that gift. That's where that gift is shown. God, Jesus died a physical death. A physical death, right? This was not a metaphorical cross. This was a physical death. It was a painful physical. He was bruised for our iniquities. And so that, 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 that you know, the chastisement of his uh, peace was upon him. So that whole physical part of God sometimes even allowing uh, and we, we struggle with that in, as Christians because we wonder why does God allow sickness or why does God allow pain or why does God allow, you know, these things to happen. But sometimes even the buffeting of our spirit is good for us in ways. And then they're, they're not all explained that way, but those are some of the things we have to understand in the realm of tough love that also comes from God. All right? Okay, good. All right. Thank all right. You. Uh, again, great study on tonight. If you want to take the test. Scan. It's free. You just go online and take it. Take it. Tell your friends about it. Uh, look, we make it a part of premarital. We make it a part of what they teach in premarital. You get to know your love language. We do it in singles. We've referred the singles ministry to it, couples ministry to it, everybody. We want everybody to know the language in which you love, the way you like to be loved, the way you like to give love, and then the way we should love God and how God loves us. Uh, great study on tonight. And look, we always ask for first-time visitors. Your very first time visitor, let us see your hand on tonight. If you've never been here before and this is your first time coming, who are you? Hold your hand up. All right, so everybody's been here at least once. Good. And we always like to extend an invitation to Christ. If there's anyone here uh, who does not have a church home, and look, it's about love and loving God and being loved in return. Uh, one of the things that we're determined to do is to make better families, uh, better families, amen. And we're doing that through teaching. We're going to teach a subject on blended families. We're going to deal with the blended families in scripture. We want everybody to see that. How do we get through these things? Because it's our reality, okay? If you're here and you need a church home, would you come now? All right. Seeing that there are none, there's always room. All right, everybody, we're going to put an offering tray up on tonight. But then before I tell you this, it wouldn't be right for me to tell you about love and you think I'm going to talk about Valentine's Day, but I'm not. You figured that out for yourself. Pete and Lenore have been married 54 years today. They done learn how to speak words of affirmation, quality time. They done learn how to speak acts of service. They done learn how to speak cuss you out, fall out, fall back in. They done learn how to speak them all. You know, 54 years, Pete, y'all, what's the secret? Tell us what the secret is, Pete. Tell us what the secret is, Lenore. See that? That's why they still married, because they ain't figured it out, so they just decided we're going to stay together till we figure it out. How about that? Two of the loveliest people to be around uh, that you've ever been around. Uh, Pete has such a, you know, and I tell you, all of us know this, and so I ain't saying Lenore's a little high strung, and Pete is just as laid back as a brick. And so something about what God did with that match, he said, I know what to give each one of y'all, you know. And so uh, they, they go together real good. Thank y'all for being an example of what love looks like. All right, come on, stand. Teacher going to give us last words and closing prayer. All right, y'all, again, if you have not taken your love language test, please do so. I think it's important to know those. And let's, let's practice that physical touch. We could just join hands with somebody. <laughs> While they figure that out. 
All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you right now again just expressing our thanks and adoration to you, Lord. How you uh, show us new mercy and new love every single day, Lord. When we are not deserving, you show us love, Lord. We are not showing it to others, Lord. You show us love, God. The perfect example, always, God, unconditional. We are not deserving and we are not ever going to be, but, Lord, you continue to do so. Thank you for these people to the left and to the right of me, Lord, how they are willing to love, God, in ways that can be reached and understood by all. Their obedience to you, God, being here to better themselves, Lord, in their relationships, their families, their workplace, God, wherever it may be, Lord. And as we go into the week, Lord, and there will be people who may not show us love or people who are harder to love, Lord, be with us. Be that strength in those areas, Lord. Love is hard. It is very hard. Be that strength in those areas where it's not easy for us, God. May you stay with us, Lord, as we try. And we will keep trying. And we may fail, Lord. But thank you again for those mercies and that continuous love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.